Hello, my name is Chris Taylor. I'm the lead designer of Supreme Commander 2, and we're here today to show you some of what we've been doing and give you a little bit of a demo on one of our cool new maps. You can see right away here that we're into a brand new era of rendering our terrain maps. This, this world is fantastic here. You've got these raised platforms, just incredible, the shadowing, the global illumination model we're using here. Uh, we've got some rockhead tanks on the top of the platform. And they're battling it out here with some Cybern bots. And as this battle takes place, you can see that we're able to move the camera anywhere in three space here. And then full strategic zoom is, is here as well, where we can zoom in and pull out, really uh, position the camera anywhere we want to see the battle. Now we were getting our butt kicked a little bit there, so we're going to zoom in here and show you the NOAA unit cannon. This is one of our experimentals. This unit acts like a factory in that it builds the units, stores them in these magazines, and then allows you to shoot them straight across the map. And you can see the, the units come into the position. Some of the, um, the rockets break off the units, so it lands on the platform. And now they can go in there and help us out, because uh, those Cybern bots were a little too tough for those rockheads. And now we're able to go back here to the Inoue unit cannon there and queue up some more units. You can see the selections across the bottom in the UI. And you'll notice in general our UI is a lot lower profile than past games. Uh, to give you more screen space than ever, the game runs in 16x9 here. It also runs in dual screen mode as well and has a wide range of options because one of the things we're shooting for here in Screen Commander 2 is to not only take advantage of a lot of the next generation of technologies on the GPU, but also to allow the game to run on more hardware than ever. So that's one of our goals, so more people can play Screen Commander 2 and, and not just be a game for people with high-end hardware. Alright, so we're going to pull back here. You see we're getting hit with some long-range artillery, so we're going to zoom in here. You can see it blasting away. Uh, the game is pre-alpha, so uh, we've still got a bunch of work left, a lot of polish, a lot of tuning and balancing, um, but we're really happy the way it, with the way it's shaping up here. And you'll notice, as we zoom in and zoom out, we can see the battle at any distance that we like, give commands. We've got the armored command unit for the UEF coming in. He's got all kinds of upgrades that he can do and boosts. For example, research the escape pod. That's where the head comes off. The head can escape back to base if you've used your commander deep behind enemy lines. And you can rebuild a new body. You've got torpedo upgrades. You've got a shoulder-mounted artillery. You've just got all kinds of neat little toys you can add to your commander as well as jump jets for making jumps across these incredible chasms like you see here on the map where you really do need to get across the space and you can't walk or swim there. Now, we're going to take you into the next part and talk a lot about researching, upgrades, production values here of the game. You know, one of the things we're doing in Supreme Commander 2 is just a lot more attention to detail in almost every part of the game, The what we call the production values. It's uh, it's this uh, high attention to detail, the, the lots of polygons, but we also really use normal mapping and all these other really cool shader technologies. I won't bore you with all the details, but I will say lots going on here. The unit casts a shadow, obviously, on the ground, but it casts a shadow on itself. And things like the mountains there actually cast across the terrain as well, just to create a world that's alive. You can see the, uh, the UEF Air Factory here producing a gunship. You notice that point defense folding up, lots of articulation, lots of details. It's just really fun. makes the world really come alive. Going into research now, we've got land, air, naval, We've got structures that can be upgraded. We've got the actual commander himself uh, that can go through a bunch of upgrades. You can see here across this tree all the different areas. We've got boosts where you take a core stat and you improve them. You've got upgrades where you can actually add something onto an existing unit like artillery piece or like the jump jets on the ACU. And then finally you've got unlocks, and that's units that are available to you only if you invest the research points. Now you get these research points by going out into battle and battling your opponent, you accumulate them based on the damage you do, but you also get points 
from research facilities that you build. So if you build more than one, you're going to get a lot more research points, but that's a decision you have to make where you want to invest your resources. Now we see here a rockhead tank. We've got the short barrels increased to the long barrel, gives us some firepower, gives us a little more range. We go to three barrels, even more firepower. And if you want to upgrade to the surface-to-air missile package so you can take on those aircraft, and we're going to give you a little demo here and show you how these rockhead tanks, where they were beat badly before, we're going to show you now how they can take on some of those air opponents and do much, much better when you make those choices to upgrade them. Now we're bringing in the Illuminate here. The Illuminate, all new uh, faction, that's an outgrowth of the Aeon Illuminate combined with the Seraphim. And you can see the style of the design is very unique, a lot more fun to look at. One of our goals is so you can really tell what a unit does by looking at it uh, and not have that moment where you're like, is that artillery or is that a tank? So it really helps. You can see them battling it all out here, full on simulation. We love our over the top battles at Gaspar Games. And we like to really take things as far as we can visually. Uh, you can see here it's all taking place in 3D space. Some games run a, uh, a dice roll system. We run a full-on simulation. These, these missiles have to connect, uh, and in doing so, we don't really know uh, what the outcome is until the missile hits, in case that aircraft were to dodge or you know, be, be destroyed by another missile, have that missile fly right through that wreckage. So, I mean, it really is a full-on simulation, all happening in 3D space. You can move the camera around, take a look at it from any angle, just trying to just really enjoy these over the top effects here. Although, again, like I said, this is pre alpha, so there's a lot of work left to do, and I will take this even further to uh, really uh, polish the remaining special effects. And uh, of course, we've got tuning and balancing to do as we uh, hit the home stretch here in the game. But uh, the last thing I want to talk about for this section is how you can just quickly grab these Rockhead tanks, and you'll watch how they form up. It's very dynamic. This is great for when you're in battle. The units aren't penalized uh, speed-wise. They can just uh, they just melt into position. It's just it's just really great and a huge improvement on our formation systems uh, of the past. And it uses this fantastic new technology called Flow Field that was developed at the University of Washington. And we've been able to take that and adapt that for Supreme Commander too. It's very cool stuff. All right, now that we've finished that, we're going to take the remaining UEF units here. We're going to drag select some of these here and move them out and get them ready at the end of this platform at the far left here and ready for the final cyber invasion where we're going to push the number of units uh, a lot higher and show a big invasion force from the cyber bots. Another great example of our advanced pathfinding. We have the Megalith 2 here that was making a push and just got got taken out. Oh, have a Fat Boy 2. This is the evolution of the Fat Boy from the first game. And you can see there he's really outfitted to be a totally over-the-top land unit with a lot more firepower. You can see the units all pathing in here. All kinds of units moving at once. This is uh, what we want. We want these big over-the-top battles. You can see the AC-1000, inspired by the AC-130 gunship. These cannons firing off the side like crazy, and uh, we have a big mix-it-up battle here. This is one of our operational maps. It's in a small game we might play in a multiplayer game or a skirmish game. We see here we've got the Urkanau uh, experimental units, land assault units, uh, combined with the Universal Colossus, just one of our major experimental units. We got more units dropped off on the platform. We've got the Cybranosaurus Rex, Dr. Brackman's uh, pet experimental unit that he personally developed. Another major experimental unit. And as we pull out, that's our demo here today. Thank you so much. I'll see you all real soon. Thank you.